welcome. I'm here with Brian Coble, the CEO of TC Biofarm Holdings. Brian, thank you for joining us. How are you? I'm wonderful, Michael. I appreciate you guys having me. Appreciate you being here, Brian. Let's start off with a high-level overview of the company and what it does. What can you tell us there? Yeah, TC Biofarm is a cell therapy company uh, focused in oncology. Specifically, we use a type of T-cell called a Gamma Delta T-cell. And the Gamma Delta is your body's first line of defense. Uh, it sniffs out an antigen called isopentanol pyrophosphate, or IPP, and that's what triggers the Gamma Delta to affect apoptosis or kill those cells. All sick and disease cells emit IPP. That includes all tumors ever discovered and studied. So the company initially targeted themselves in oncology indications and specifically acute myeloid leukemia, uh, which has a five-year survival rate, extremely low, and we'll expand it into other blood cancers. So excited to be where we are. You know, gamma deltas are the hottest space right now in biotech, uh, and we've launched our phase 2B. So an exciting time at the company to be in cell therapy. Absolutely. And then talk a little bit about your target market too, right? Who is the addressable demographic for TC? It's interesting. So specifically, if you look at AML, it, it's several billion, right? It's about 12 to 15, depending on uh, a couple of different numbers globally. But if you look at the entire hematological oncology uh, market, you're talking, you know, 50, 60 billion uh, dollars a year. Um, it also depends on where we price point. What's really interesting about what we're doing and how we do what we do is it's an allogeneic, unmodified product. So we're taking you know, other people's who are healthy, taking their gamma deltas, isolating them, expanding them, and giving them to sick patients. And we can do that for an extremely cost-efficient dosing. So we can actually drop the cost to about a tenth the cost of chemotherapy. So you know, interestingly enough, it's a huge addressable market for us, but we also have a potential paradigm shift and a game-changing technology as it pertains to the economies of actually treating some of these patients. So really exciting for, for us to be able to treat these patients at a cost uh, that, you know, that doesn't break the bank for them, doesn't cause them bankrupt. It opens up equality as it pertains to treating of patients, right? Because, you know, certain insurances can't cover that extensive and expensive chemotherapy. Now we're offering them a much cheaper option that could be impactful to their lives and extend them. So, you know, huge market for us, you know, multi-billions of dollars, but also a real opportunity here for patients to get the best care at a cost-efficient price. Understood. And then the potential market size and addressable market of this target, target demographic too. Tell us a little bit about how big this opportunity could be. So, so we look at it from a perspective of, you know, the, the low hanging fruit of AML, which is about, you know, 12 to $15 billion, give or take, you know, we think we're a good chunk of that. You know, we, we think our target market is probably 50 some odd percent of that. So off the bat, you know, we're talking about somewhere in the range of, you know, five to $8 billion market for us expanding into all heme, uh, meaning ALL, CLL, multiple myeloma. At that point, you're probably talking, you know, 20 to 30 billion uh, of a market size. And we're just getting started at that point. Got it. And then can you talk a little bit about your competitors and what you're doing differently in the space that you work in? Yeah, you know, it's hard to look at the competitive landscape because from our perspective, you know, oncology is such a difficult space and so many people out there doing so many wonderful things you really don't sort of have a, a competition. It's more a camaraderie, right? I'm rooting for all these guys to do great things and I'm rooting for combination therapies. I don't think there's one approach to cancer that's gonna solve it, right? Um, but you've got companies like Lava Therapeutics and Imchek, which are trying to turn cold tumors hot uh, and draw the gamma deltas to the tumor. Um, you have some other companies in the gamma delta space. Innate Bio is doing some really interesting things. Um, you have the NK cell world, like in Carta, which is doing some wonderful things as well. Um, what makes us different is one, you know, we were the first mover in gamma delta. So we were a gamma delta company in 2014. We were fully allogeneic uh, by 2017, which is ahead of the curve as well. And we we're vertically integrated. So we own our manufacturing facility. That allows us to control our costs. We move quickly. We're the first pivotal trial in gamma deltas globally. Um, and we don't HLA match, meaning because the gammas aren't MHC restricted, I don't need to donor match. I can take any donor's blood that has healthy gamma deltas and put it into a patient. It's also a frozen thawed product. So it's truly an off the shelf technology. I can ship and store it for up to 18 months and treat patients right as they walk in the clinic, just thaw it down, it's about 15 minute process and inject it into the patient. So what makes us stand out, I think really is our knowledge base, the fact that we've been in the Gamma Deltas for so long and are the leading player as it pertains to the clinic. And additionally, the fact that we're vertically integrated and control our costs and our product. Terrific. And then can you tell us a little bit more about the problem that you're looking to solve specifically at TC Biopharm? You know, I, I think the problem is really twofold, right? The first problem is the obvious, which is treat patients that don't have a treatment option right now. 
right? It's a really, AML is a very difficult indication for patients. It's got a low survival rate, um, a high level of relapse and refractory that goes on for ALL, CLL, and multiple myeloma. So we're trying to give these patients an option where not only we're treating them and they're able to survive longer, but because of the lack of toxicity that we're showing in our clinical trials, there's no toxicity, these patients could have a much higher quality of life. So it's a higher quality of life and actually giving them a, a, an extended lifetime as well, right? The second part of it really is opening up treatment to patients right now in an, under, an underserved population, right? Because they're economically disadvantaged uh, or because these treatments are so expensive, if you look at a CAR-T, it's a million to $2 million to treat a patient, right? A chemotherapy and bone marrow ablation is $750,000. It's a really expensive treatment for a relatively low success rate long-term. We're opening this up to patients because of our cost that maybe wouldn't have been able to afford that or maybe insurance wouldn't have covered it because of the type of insurance they have. So it's twofold, right? We're treating patients that currently might not have a treatment because right now all the treatment options are you know, not that great for them. But additionally, we're opening up on an econ economics basis where now we're treating the underserved population. So I think it's really twofold what we're trying to do. And, and you know, I'm, I'm thankful that I get to, to work with some really, really smart people who do wonderful things every day to advance the technology. That's amazing. Okay. And then what obstacles are you overcoming in the next 12 to 18 months? And if you're looking for some key takeaways for investors to, to keep an eye out for, what should they be watching over the next year and a half? Yeah, I think there's a couple of things we're working on over the next year and a half. Obviously, data is king. So, you know, our phase 2B data is really exciting. That's in AML, second line. It's fully allogeneic. It's frozen thawed. Uh, that trial has launched in the UK, and we'll be moving that into the US, hopefully in the next uh, quarter or so. So sometime in Q4, we're hoping to be there, um, and we'll hopefully get that put together. Additionally, I'd be looking at combination therapies. So because of the lack of toxicity for the gamma delta, there's a number of areas we can slot in in the treatment paradigm for patients. So you could talk about a combination therapy with um, a bispecific antibody. You could talk about checkpoint inhibitors. You know, we view our product on the allogeneic unmodified basis as a backbone, sort of like Keytruda, right? Merck uses Keytruda in combination with any number of other opportunities to pursue solid tumors and, all, and other indications, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to look at all these other solid tumor indications and see where there's a combination we might find a partner to work with in biospecific antibodies, checkpoint inhibitors, companies that are activating the butyrophilin pathway like an Imcheck or a Lava Therapeutics. You know, all of that is really exciting. And I would expect us to move forward with partners, you know, over the next 12 to 18 months where we can test out our product in combination with any number of other um, uh, opportunities and technologies in other solid tumor indications. And then I would look at the blood cancer umbrella trial where ALL, CLL, and multimyeloma are playing out. And again, if we'll be getting data in AML in the first half of next year. And, you know, AML doesn't change when it crosses the Atlantic Ocean, right? So when you see how it reacts in patients in the UK, it's going to be a really, really good sort of forerunner for how the data is going to read out in the U.S. as well. So exciting times with AML data coming out. Our U.S. Uh, trials are going to be coming online with our U.S. clinical partner uh, and then solid tumor uh, combination trials with any number of partners over the next 12 to 18 months. Fantastic. Brian Coble, CEO of TC Biofarm Holdings. It's been great looking ahead with you and seeing what's coming up next. Thank you again for joining us. Thanks, Michael. Take care.